Hi, today's good person to know is Jo Bowler. She's a professor at Stanford University and founder of Ucubed. And she said it's a myth that we're either good or bad at maths. She says it's a real shame because that's the reason why there's widespread underachievement. Jo said anyone can learn maths because the brain is so flexible. And they did some research into the black cab taxi drivers. And I really didn't realize just how clever they are because they have an increased part of the brain which we don't have which makes them brainier than us. Not only that, at Stanford University they compared findings with kids with learning disabilities with, and that against regular kids and after just eight weeks those with learning disabilities had the same brain function as the regular kids. And Joe said, but with the right teachings and the right messages, virtually anyone can excel in maths. Now next, Joe touched on mindset. And she said, kids with a growth mindset do better because they have a different set of behaviors. And that their research showed that kids with a growth mindset are two years ahead. And what I absolutely loved was the part where Joe said, it's okay to make mistakes. It's drilled into us. But if we make a mistake, it's a bad thing. But Joe said, by making mistakes, we make ourselves brainier. Seriously, watch this video and don't ever be afraid again. Joe said, it's important that you believe in yourselves and that the task you're about to do, because if nothing else, you will become brainier as a result of it. So do check out Joe's website called YouCubed because there's a lot of information on there. So I hope you enjoy this video. It's sponsored by Wildcrest Parks, the largest residential park home and holiday home operators in the UK. Thank you for watching. We now know that the brain is so plastic, so flexible, so changeable, that anybody can reach high levels because anybody can grow their brain and do amazing things. This myth that's so strong in maths education that you can either do maths or you can't. This myth, is solely responsible for a huge amount of underachievement. We have to get rid of this myth. I wrote a book a few years ago. I called it The Elephant in the Classroom because I argued that there is a big elephant that's standing in most maths classrooms, and it is the idea that only some kids are gonna be good at maths. Uh, nobody talks about it, but most people believe it. The teachers believe it, the kids believe it, and the parents believe it. And until we get rid of that single myth, we will always have widespread underachievement and we have to do something about it. We know that our brain is our most complex organ and we know that when learning happens, a synapse fires in the brain. And the synapse is like an electric current that moves between parts of the brain. And if you learn something deeply, that synapse will turn into a brain pathway that you can use uh, forevermore. If you don't go back to the idea, you just think about something once, that synapse will wash away, like a pathway in the sand would. A lot of the evidence has come from here, our own London black cab drivers. What you may not have known when you traveled in them, I know I didn't, was just how highly qualified the drivers are. So to become a black cab driver, you study for between two and four years. And at the end of that time, you take a test, which is just beautifully called the knowledge and to pass the knowledge, you have to have memorized 25,000 streets and 20,000 landmarks in central London. The average amount of time it takes to pass the knowledge is 12 times. Brain scientists decided to study the brains of taxi drivers. And what they found was this, that at the end of that training period, they had a significantly larger hippocampus in their brain. And equally amazing, when they retired, the hippocampus shrank back down again. Nobody knew that the brain was this flexible, that it could grow and change um, in response to things that we need to do. I work with the uh, neuroscience group at Stanford University, wonderful group, and they have these amazing studies coming out. I just want to share one with you. This was a study where they brought in seven to nine-year-old kids. Half of them had mathematics, had been diagnosed as having learning disabilities, the other half did not. And they scanned their brains. And what they found was there were actual brain differences. The kids with learning disabilities, their brains were lighting up more than the other kids. What was amazing was they gave the, all the kids eight weeks of tutoring, eight weeks. 
And at the end of that time, they had the same achievement as the other kids and the same brain functioning. Uh, what we know from research is with the right teaching and the right messages, everybody can excel in mathematics. There are some kids with really severe special needs, and for them, it will always be more difficult. But for 95% of kids, they can be up there in those classes. And we urgently need to shift teachers' ideas, parents' ideas, in this country, politicians' ideas about who can achieve in mathematics. And this particular practice of deciding who can and who can't when they're in primary school and then teaching them to that level is an absolute travesty. It goes against all we know. It's amazing how many teachers have said to girls, don't worry, you don't need to be good at math. Math isn't your thing, don't worry about that. When kids get the idea that they're not a math person and they start this sort of downward trajectory, many careers are cut off from them. And this happens to a lot of women, unfortunately. Their career options shrink massively. So we have a situation now where most engineers and most people who work in computer science are men. So the second piece of brain evidence I want to talk about comes from the area of mindset. A colleague of mine at Stanford, Carol Dweck, wrote a book a few years ago, it became a New York Times bestseller, in which she showed that everybody has a mindset. You do, I do, kids in school do. And some of us think that the harder we work, the smarter or cleverer we get. And other kids think that you're really, your intelligence is kind of fixed. You can improve things, but you can't change your basic intelligence. Turns out these two mindsets are really important for kids' achievement. And it is kids with a growth mindset who do better in school, in life, um, and the reason for that is kids with a growth mindset have a different set of behaviors. Uh, they are more persistent, they're more willing to learn from mistakes. They're more determined to keep going. With a fixed mindset in your class, they're the ones when you do a more open or challenging maths activity, and they immediately put their hands up and say, I don't know what to do. That is classic fixed mindset behavior. We know that praise is really important in how kids get a mindset. Praise kids for being smart or bright or clever. That's fixed praise. And what we now know is when you praise kids in those ways, they think, oh good, I'm clever. But then later when they mess up, and they will, they think, oh, I'm not so clever. So it's very important to praise kids in terms of what they've done rather than their cleverness. You can say to kids, it's great that you've done that. I love that you've learned that, but not that fixed praise. High achieving girls, they are the biggest group of kids who believe that you're either smart or you're not. And it is the reason that few, fewer girls take STEM subjects, because if you've been told you're smart, what we know is kids become very vulnerable. They don't want to give up that label, so they don't take, they don't go into more challenging areas. I work with the PISA team now in Paris, and we have data from 13 million kids worldwide. We have analyzed the data, and the lowest achieving math students in the world are those who take a memorization approach to maths. The highest achieving kids are those who think maths is a subject of big ideas and connections. And this graph shows us the impact of mindset. The kids with a growth mindset are two years ahead. Another super exciting piece of brain evidence is this one. I love this. We now know that mistakes grow your brain. Fantastic. When you make a mistake in maths, a synapse fires in your brain. And actually, when you get a question correct, you get less brain activity, less synapse firing. When you make a mistake, there are two possible synapses. The first one comes when you make a mistake. The second one comes when you become aware you've made a mistake. Your brain grows when you make a mistake, even if you don't know you've made a mistake, because that's the time when your brain is struggling and is challenged. The times that we're stuck on something, we're struggling, we're having to think really hard, are the best times for your brain to grow. They are the times your brain grows more than any other. These are brain scans that show heat, heat scans from the brains of the people in the study. And what they find is the people with a growth mindset, their brains literally grew more when they made a mistake than the people with a fixed mindset. And so what this really tells us is this. It is so important that you believe in yourself. If you go into a situation believing in yourself, thinking, I can do this, I'm going to keep going, and you make a mistake, your brain will grow more than if you go into that situation thinking, I'm not going to be able to do this. So the beliefs you hold about yourself are extremely 
important. The final piece of brain evidence I want to share with you is this one. When chaos theory came out, they talked about the butterfly effect, how a butterfly flapping its wings in one state can cause a hurricane in another because of the cumulative effect. When mothers tell their daughters, I was no good at maths in school, their daughter's achievement immediately goes down. I see research studies all the time, but this one totally shocked me. Uh, hundreds of students, and they all wrote an essay in high school English. Half of them um, were given, they were all given critical diagnostic feedback from the teacher. Half of them got an extra sentence put on the bottom by the researchers. The, kid, the teachers didn't know who got the sentence. And those kids who got the extra sentence on the bottom achieved significantly better a year later with no other change in their school lives. So what was that sentence? What did it say? It said this, I am giving you this feedback because I believe in you. And the kids who got that written on the end of their essay did significantly better a year later. We made a, a website called Ucubed. And Ucubed has many free resources for teachers and for kids and for parents. It's free to sign up. If you sign up, you just get occasional emails from me. We launched this a year ago, and in the past year, we have had um, five million visits to this site. This is the new book I have, is, is Mindset Maths. It starts with an assumption that anyone can do anything, and that math is about taking risks and about challenge. It's a visual subject, a beautiful subject. Joe is an absolute inspiration. I was one of those kids that was told I was crap at maths and I believed the teacher because I just didn't get it. But guess what? I'm doing it now. I'm going on to YouTube and I'm learning math. And I feel so empowered because I'm fighting the fear that I always had that I was crap at maths. So do check out her website, even if you're not a kid or a parent, but just you have a fear of something, conquer that fear and go forward. I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe to see more and thank you for watching.